This is Charlie Sheen. I heard John Cryer was on the last show, so I thought, what the hell, I'll be on this one. Hey, did you know that Mike's Daily Podcast is completely independently created and produced? God, I hate this theme song. Do you know just about every podcast you listen to is part of a huge network, corporation, or it's just simply been lifted off of a radio station? Ugh. Where's the freaking creative power in that? My show is really creative. And did you know that big name podcast players like iTunes and Stitcher show only podcasts on their front page for the podcasts that pay for the advertising? Well, big, or they put the big name podcast, the big name people from like TV shows and film, like people like me. That's always like just winning and killing it. <clears throat> Please do what you can to support independent podcasters. And stop watching this show, because I'm not on it anymore. But listen to Mike's Daily Podcast, because it's starting right now. This show is clean, pretty much. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 812. Hello, it's Mike Matthews, broadcasting from the last place on Earth, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, it's Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere, the Engineer, plus... They're not so Mick happy in Asia. We'll find out why. And anything amazing on the Grammys last night? Hmm. Sorta. I'll give you my useless review. Mike's Daily Podcast. And there were some strange things that happened on the last show, which I will tell you. Mike's Daily Podcast. But first I must reveal to you that I used to love the group Nelson they were in the early 90s, and I used to like to shop at Gelson's, but then they got really expensive. And I really love the digital age. And it's occurred to me that 46 is a pivotal age because you realize that the door is closing on youth. Mike's Daily Podcast. Perhaps it closed a long time ago. It's the lies posing as truth Mike's That you become more aware of Daily The older you get Podcast Because you've seen it Yeah Over and over Well, more on that possibly later But we had uh, Valentino telling us on the last show that he loves Taylor Swift Oh look, who just walked in? Hello my god, these are Shelly Duhart, the gift shop supervisor Oh my god, I think Taylor Swift is like really awesome Do you love how she... Puts those big eyelashes on. Yeah, Mike Matthews, I'm wearing those too. Oh my gosh. If you bat those, does the wind like push people back? I don't know. Let me try. Whoa! That blew me right out the window. Mike Matthews, you're silly. Yeah, Grammys last night, you saw Taylor Swift is out there dancing to just about every single song. Uh, she is always cute as a button. And then we also found out that Valentino hates Miley Cyrus because Bison Bentley sounds like her. Look who just uh, also walked in. Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer, Mike. We noticed on the last show that you said we're also a lot. We're also. Yeah, I did say we're also quite a bit because I was explaining where we are also at because we're on many different websites. So... I guess I, 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 in radio, we call that a crutch when you use a certain phrase over and over. So I will avoid that. Mike, I thought a crutch was when you're addicted to drugs. Well, the, you know, like if you're addicted to anything, they call that a crutch. My mom did a painting called Crutches. And you see, it's very abstract. And you see these crutches in the background. And in the foreground, there's all these things that, like drugs and alcohol and coffee and money. And she used to put... A dollar on she would like glue a dollar to this painting. And whenever she was low on cash, she would pull the dollar off the painting. She defame her uh deface rather her own art in order to get a little cash. She's such a modern art pioneer, my mom. And we wish her the best of luck. She's had I've been talking about on the show, she had a rough year last year, so things are looking up. 
uh, it's like one step at a time. Sometimes it's one step forward, two steps back. But all the positive thoughts you can have for my mom would be greatly appreciated. And at some point, I should post some of her pictures on the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. I will make that a future project. Put it in a one. Definitely, I'll try and find the crutch picture and put it as a podcast picture. But today's podcast picture is actually a, a more scenic view, a pastoral view. We're doing a lot of pastoral pics lately. Uh, pardon the plosives. And it's a picture of uh, the bay from Fairmont Ridge. You can see San Leandro in the foreground. Actually, cows in the foreground, then San Leandro, then the bay, and then uh, San Mateo way across there in Burley game. Berlin game. Burley game. That's what we call it. That's some of the games that happen behind the scenes in Berlin game. And that's really an unsubstantiated rumor. It's a lie posing as truth. And the door's closing on youth. But I do love this digital age. I love uh, the recording uh, of podcasts, posting it on YouTube. I told you a couple shows back about the problems I was having with YouTube, but now they have contacted me, and and I've been able to talk to them. Well, I, I got one email back, so I don't know if that's actually talking, but we'll find out because there was some kind of a issue with posting my podcast to them, and then I noticed you can't get a hold of them, which caused me to worry if that was the way of the internet and of, of how we'll have to deal with anything because already it's like hard to get a hold of Apple if anything happens to your Apple account you have to actually go into an Apple store or what have you but the Grammys last night this my best friend. I bought Sam Smith won so much stuff oh won't you stay with me very nice it, you know I think the song would be even better if he had retainers I think so too, Mike Matthews. And now it's time for... Mike's Absolutely Useless Review. So I was at work, actually, so I couldn't really watch it sit down and, you know, on the couch or the easy reclining leather chair and watch it. But I did notice some things as I passed by the TV from time to time. That is, well, first off, let me say right off, Hosier... And that Take Me to Church song. And then Annie Lennox coming out and blowing the roof off of wherever they were doing. Probably Staples, right? She. Oh, my gosh. How many years since the first song, the first hit she had with the Eurythmics with Sweet Dreams Are Made of This. And she just killed singing I Got a Spell on You. The Screaming Jay Hawkins song. Oh, my gosh. God, that was amazing. And the audience, completely big standing O. Way to go to Annie Lennox. So good. It, it just, I was like, what? Oh, and I should preface this by, I prefaced watching the show. I was looking up Neil Patrick Harris because I imitate him for one of those celebrity intros that we do here on the show. And I found his opening to the 2013 Tony Awards. And I watched that, and I was like, wow, this is one of the best openings I've ever seen for an award show. He does a, a disappearing magic trick. He jumps through a, a, a hoop. He uh, uh, tells some funny jokes. The lyrics are hilarious. He starts off playing acoustic guitar like a folk singer. It was fin- just phenomenal. So I'm like, this is sort of the peak of how good you can watch a live television award show performance. Let's see how the Grammys do. And that Hozier thing blew me away. I love the Pharrell, the Happy with Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer, if you don't know, he has scored just about every movie you've ever seen. He is an ama- He's is an been around a long time. And to see him on stage with an electric guitar was like, oh, that's great. That must have been a dream come true for Hans. But that, yeah, very different interpretation of happy but that's Pharrell the guy is highly creative he says he gets a lot of his inspiration his ideas his creations in the morning in the shower and then he'll head over to the right away to the recording studio that's what I read Ed Sheeran and Electric Light Orchestra Jeff Lynn the man behind um, the Traveling Wolverines and he produced Tom Petty's huge album Full Moon Fever uh, wrote 
a lot of big songs in the 70s. Oh, yeah, like for Olivia Newton-John in the 80s and then the 90s. Him doing Evil Woman and then Paul McCartney dancing along to that. He was like standing up, the only one standing up and dancing. And then he saw the camera on him and like sat down. (laughs) And it's funny because Jeff Lynne of Electric Light Orchestra produced the uh, Beatles album. The one where they, uh, long after John Lennon had died, they got together some tapes that John had recorded. And then the surviving Beatles got together and recorded a couple of extra songs that Jeff Lynne produced. So Paul McCartney, a huge fan of Jeff Lynne. That was neat to see him dancing to to Evil Woman. And then when they started playing Mr. Blue Sky, they put the camera on Beyonce and she was up dancing, which is funny because, of course, her daughter is named Blue. So that would be Miss Blue Ivy. I didn't understand the Madonna thing. I didn't see the Katy Perry thing, although I came in right at the end and I saw there were a lot of people like crying. So that must have been moving. And then whenever they showed that guy that's the head of the Grammy organization, the guy with the beard, who looks a little like the father from Family Ties, I I turn off the show because I can't stand him. It's always, the Grammys are a very integral part of music, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, great. Now you're going to tell us a bunch of boring stuff and how you counted the ballots and all that kind of thing. So I turn it off then. Look, that's the best part. Floyd? What about Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett? I missed that part, Floyd. It was great. Um, okay. So, yeah. What did you think of the Grammys? Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And what do you think about McDonald's? They're losing so much money. The chickens have come home to roost. People are really trying to think more healthy, and they've seen the headlines and the obesity statistics, and they've had enough. Oh, and the diabetes and all that. So with today's quarterly earnings release, McDonald's has gone from the frying pan into the fire, according to Fortune.com. It is reported that the global same-store sales were down by almost 5% versus the expected 1.2% dip. Now, its once high-growth Asian markets were down almost 13%. Indeed, it is ironic. For the $72 billion burger chain, we're 12 hours after the 65-year-old McDonald's fired its CEO, Don Thompson. Danny Meyer, founder of 14-year-old Shake Shack, fired up his burger chain on the New York Stock Exchange with a $1.7 billion value, doubling its IPO price of the day. McDonald's is the big cheese in this market with 68 million people served daily in 130 countries, 38,000 outlets, 2 million employees, one of them was Shania Twain. Despite that presence, diners and investors alike have flipped over the higher quality of places like Shake Shack, Five Guys, In-N-Out, and other burgers. But, you know, In-N-Out is not that expensive, but Shake Shack is an expensive burger. So this article by Jeffrey Sonnenfeld points out a couple of problems that McDonald's has, one of them being food quality and also food safety, long revered for its food safety in Asia and China in particular, as well as the Middle East. They have lost credibility as they had to close a meat processing facility in 2014 for continuing food safety problems. Also, their pricing policy in an attempt to woo people away from the cheap dollar menu items and value meal offers toward higher quality food. Traditional customers were confused if price was the focus or not. Now, it is Sonic Burger, not McDonald's, that leads in simplicity and low prices. Also, standardization versus customization. McDonald's was long criticized for not allowing customers to have it their way. And supplier sourcing. They had problems getting their supplies. McDonald's was ambushed by slowdowns at the Port of Los Angeles without any effective contingency plans. This left the fast food chain French Fryless in key markets like Japan. But no matter how many problems they have... The fact that the name McDonald's is like one of the biggest brands in the entire world. I'm sure they'll be popping back up at some point. Maybe this is the time to invest in them. I don't know. Floyd? Mike, I'm not an investor. 
Yes, you are. You invested in that bucket company. Oh, yeah. I need them for cleaning the floors. Because you're Floyd the Floor Man? Yeah. Who? So email me, MikeStellyPodcast at gmail.com. What do you think about the whole McDonald's thing and the thing with the Grammys and all that? We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, MikeStellyPodcast at gmail.com. I'm going to try not to say we also. Uh, the website, MikeStaleyPodcast.com, is where you can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, and Spreaker. Please tell your friends about us. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Yelp, Tumblr. The links to all of those places at mikesdailypodcast.com if you would like to help support the show and you buy a lot of crap on Amazon you can go to the Amazon link there on the left hand side of mikesdailypodcast.com whenever you're going to buy anything on Amazon go to that portal buy whatever it is you're going to buy and we'll be oh so happy mikesdailypodcast.com there is a blog and the daily podcast picture and all my past interviews are at mikesdailypodcast.com. We, as we go outside of the last place on earth, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. And here's today's podcast picture. Yes, there are cows in the picture. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com to see that picture. It was a nice sunset and the hills are still green here in the Bay Area, especially after last night. Dang, we got a lot of rain last night. We might get a little bit of rain this afternoon, but it's done for a while. But, wow, we got a lot of rain over the weekend. We were so happy. We were just dancing in the stuff, Shelly. Hi, Matthew. I don't like to dance in rainwater. It's, like, so gross. Shelly, it's coming right out of the heavens. What could be more pure? No, I mean, ew. Okay. Mike, we love Nelson, too. I can't live without your love and affection. Yes, Mike, they were a great band. They were two really hot-looking guys. Brothers. In the early 90s. When all that hair metal was popular. Yeah, they were kind of like trying to be hair metal wannabes. They had sort of a rock sound. They had the big name because they were Ricky Nelson's sons and... Well, I guess now they're going around, they tour, and they play their dad's music. So that's kind of cool. They're going to be in Livermore doing that. But they had that... Oh, it's that other one. Uh, the After the Rain. After the Rain. Am I the only one that remembers that? Oh, great. Mike, we really enjoyed your performance just then. Thank you. And the crickets. Do we have a cricket wrangler? Is that why they all showed up at once? I used to fire off missiles... At the Redstone Arsenal in Alabama. I thought that was a Patrick Duffy-esque moment that you had. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm an engineer and I invent a lot of things, so that could have happened. Maybe. You're a mystery. You're an enigma. Perhaps you are the one that cracked enigma. No, that was Alan Turing. I thought it was Benedict Cumberbatch. Anyway, next show, we're going to bring you... A very special guest all the way from Seattle, Washington. It's a band known as Lowlands. They got great music. We're going to hear their music. Going to talk to them next show in the segment into an interview. Plus, we'll hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks for being on the show, Charlie. Uh, blowing out your.